participants, hopefully from all over the world. So welcome to the latest edition of the PMI Switzerland uh, virtual event series. Today, uh, we have a topic on how to empower on and uh, enhance your project management role. So before going to the event, as usual, a short update on PMI Switzerland. So as you would see in this uh, slide, next slide, please, um, about PMI Switzerland. Yes, there it is, 2019 at a glance. 2019 was completely different from 2020, as you all know. And this slide exactly shows you in a nutshell our activities in 2019. Yes, we are celebrating 20 years of PMI. And uh, I don't want to go through each and every uh, of the uh, topics which is mentioned on this slide. It's uh, quite a lot of uh, activities from the PMI Switzerland side which, which we achieved in 2019. Just one important topic where I would really like to touch is this uh, 27 professional evening events organized with 1,082 participants. That has been our limelight. And uh, as you all know, we are organized in Switzerland in three different uh, regions, Zurich, Basel, and Romandy. And these three uh, professional uh, teams organized uh, this much events with these participants. So that is the core um, of our activity, um, engaging you as volunteers, as well as uh, members of PMI Switzerland. Yes, we will distribute these slides after the event, so you can read through the rest of the slides uh, after the event. As you see, there are master classes coming, and also uh, 2020, as I mentioned to you, um, is different. I mean, obviously, as I mentioned, 27 events, 2019, this year, we also adapted swiftly to the COVID-19 challenges and started the virtual mode. We were quick in adapting this into this virtual mode. And uh, that is also why we are here with this latest edition of our virtual evening, um, virtual evening event. You will also see a list of upcoming events at the tail end of the event. Uh, there are quite a lot of uh, online events coming up as well. Yes, uh, next slide, please. So also, you see here, you can visit us on these social media channels, the usual ones like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. And they are also now easily available and reachable from the PMI Switzerland website as well. So next slide. Yes, uh, just before we start, uh, just some uh, uh, administrative topics. So during the whole session, you will be muted as you already have realized that. So you can use the Q&A to post your questions. This will be opened uh, by the panelists uh, during the course of the meeting. However, you can also put it on the chat if you have questions. Um, which are questions which are not answered during the workshop will come in an FAQ follow up. So don't worry about that. And please use Mendimeter. I think you also got this uh, in the introduction mail that we will be um, asking a few questions using Mendimeter. And the code will also be shown uh, when uh, we reach uh, the Mendimeter question. Yes, there is a workshop worksheet shared with you prior to the event. Uh, uh, this was also available to you in your email, which you have got. So please keep it that ready as well. Uh, just uh, for your information, the session will be also recorded and published on the PMI Switzerland YouTube channel. I think you also have given the consent for that. And as I mentioned uh, before, you will receive the workshop slides after the event. Yes, that's the two big ladies for the day. Um, now, before going to the topic, I would like to introduce our speakers for the day. So, Anna Hakobian, born in Armenia, Anna. Just a kidding. Yes, Hi. yeah. Uh, so Anna, you pronounced uh, my last name perfectly. I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, born in Armenia. She spent her last uh, two decades across the world in uh, many places and now currently in Zurich. So she also um, manages complex uh, digital transformation for Fortune 500 companies and secured uh, strategic partnerships. She has a master's in public administration and obviously a PMP certification as well. And uh, she's, in addition to that, she's a prolific networker and a passionate about helping companies in various parts, uh, scaling their operations. So her current role is that Paxis is leading um, the North American operation of this company. Next is Katarina, uh, born in Czech Republic. She spent the last uh, decade uh, working across Europe and internationally in the space of business development and project management for corporate and startup clients. Katarina is a, a business development strategical entrepreneur and business advisor. And currently she is the CEO of a new FinTech business venture 
called Epicon, aimed at digitalizing uh, and fundraising. So welcome uh, from the PMI Switzerland side for you both for taking your time. And now I hand it over to you to take us through to, to the, yeah, to the evening. Thank you, Pastor. And then I'll come back uh, um, at the tail end of the event um, to say, um, just to tell the goodbye. So good luck and looking forward. Thank you very Thank you. much. I'm, 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 I see you didn't uh, try to pronounce my surname, so we'll, we'll take care of that for you at the end of the, at the, end of the session. <laughs> you can't get away with that. No, I Wonderful. Will, yeah. uh, well, welcome everybody also from mine and Anna's side. Um, we are super excited to have, um, have the opportunity to have this session with you tonight, and thank you for taking the time from your busy agendas. As uh, Prashan mentioned, we're gonna, even though we would love to have this um, workshop with you face-to-face, uh, -face, that's not possible these days. So we tried to put in a few interactive elements. So as Prashan mentioned, please use the chat, uh, use the Q&A to fill in any questions you might have. We have a dedicated Q&A session at the end. We are going to be using Mentimeter. So get your phones uh, ready and then also if you had a chance to download and print the worksheet or of course just a piece of paper would do also. So welcome to the Reinventing Your PM Role session where we're going to be guiding you through how to really act on your power and enhance your impact. And before we do so we will have the first Mentimeter warm-up. So if you can please go to menti.com and use the code 4228637 and quickly share your name and where, where are you joining us from tonight? And I'm first one. Hi, Eva, Christopher, Sylvia, very nice to have you with us tonight. Adrian, Monica. Carmela, Matt, Paolo. Okay, now now it's moving too fast. <laughs> Stefania, everybody welcome to the session. And now we have other cities competing with Zurich, Luzern, Neon. I love Neon. Uh, New York, okay, Anna, you win. Doesn't count. <laughs> we have more daylight than we will have. Milos, Milos, I guess. Wonderful. So that's at least we see the Mentimeter is working. Wonderful. So we we'll have more Mentimeter uh, as we go, so have your phones next to you, but let's start. And uh, with, for tonight, we have prepared three specific sections. The first section I was gonna look at uh, what changes are the PMs facing at the moment and what such new reality brings and offers to you as project managers. The second section is going to do a deep dive on the how to build a strong foundation for yourself, looking at the three key pillars to establish. And then last section, third section, is going to look at how to leverage the unique role you're actually in as a project manager and the key elements of mastering the connector role. And before we jump into the first section, I would like you to share with us via the chat a quick one word check-in. And check-in is actually a practice that a lot of companies, small or big, use out there before meetings to allow to check on people, to check how are you feeling, how do you arrive to the meeting, are you tired, energized, excited? What do you also need to leave behind to focus fully? Maybe you still need to go do finish some project work, do your emails, finish the budget planning, or your attention of kids, your dog, your partner is awaiting you. And also to think what would make this session success for me? So what do I need to make the session worth my time? So if you can quickly share in the chat kind of um, a one, one, two, three words with us, that would be great to just understand who do we have, what expectations we have in the room, and also how are people feeling. Just a few seconds. If you can also test that the chat is working. Great, excellent, very good. <laughs> <laughs> a few laughs. Okay, laughs. Okay, we'll, we'll take care of the, the fun part of it. Busy and excited. I, I, ha I can know this combination. Feeling good. Wonderful. 
Success, connect and share. Perfect. So of course, as we have others, still feel free to finish submitting your contribution. And here I'm going to hand over to Anna to start the first section, Changing World and the Changing Role of PMs. Anna, stage is yours. Thank you. Well, um, I think Katerina, our job is done here because everybody is feeling great and excited and uh, I don't think we can, we can actually do anything. So, you know, that's, that's, uh, that was the goal of our section, but um, okay. So uh, feeling great, feeling excited. I also know that this is 7 PM in Zurich and I um, want to see who already has a glass of wine and come on, you have to have a glass of wine and please do not tell me that you are looking into your Zoom screen without having anything. Well, no, no comments, but if you don't, please water. Okay, well, I have water because I'm in New York and it's still 1 p.m., but I think the glass of wine will help. All right, so um, what I wanted to do, and this is just something that I saw yesterday. Yesterday, I was attending a lecture by Deepak Chopra, and you probably all know him, which was uh, an amazing lecture slash meditation. And he was sitting in um, actually at the real beach where you could hear the waves, you could hear the sound, and I could hear his calming voice and I said, wow, what do I have to do to have the same effect? So I'm just going to put a virtual background and I will achieve the same effect. So let's see how that works. Uh, one other interesting thing that Deepak mentioned yesterday was that we as humans have about 72,000 thoughts per day. 72,000, right? Just think about it. And the goal of his session was to see if by the end of that one and a half hour, we're actually able to reduce it to some. For me personally, that one and a half hour went like a second and my thoughts dropped to probably five to 10. And I thought that, okay, if we're able to reduce them to maybe 71,000 for you, then, then we can say that this is a success. But uh, let's dive into our section. Let's, let's start talking about this whole new reality and, uh, and maybe I get rid of this disturbing background and let's, let's talk about everything that we're going through these days. So we hear so much about this new reality, new norm, the new change. And I think we all are a little bit like uh, tired of these words and in a way they also sometimes don't mean much to us. All of it obviously comes mostly in a very negative context where the systems that worked for us before, they just don't work anymore. The structures that we're used to, they're not there anymore. The routines are not there. I know that most of you are in Switzerland where planning is a big part of your lives and good luck planning this age, right? So what do we do, right? When I was working on this presentation, one of the thoughts I had, um, there's a reason that there is a picture of a desert here. And uh, shortly before the lockdown, I went to a trip to a desert of Morocco, which obviously was just a short term 48 hour experience. But it was incredible when you are in a situation where you don't have the external stimulation and we all live in the world where we all depend on entertainment, friends, bars, restaurants. I uh, live between New York and Zurich and you know everything that happens in New York is external and suddenly all that drops. And what that creates is that insane moment of self intimacy with yourself where you suddenly have the silence, but you also have the possibility to suddenly start getting excited, excited about this new space and what you can do with this. And in the days of the lockdown in March and April, which I was in uh, Zurich, a lot of times I thought about that and I was thinking the same thoughts as you have in desert where it's so silent, there is so much space and how can you actually like start getting excited and take advantage of it? So let's take a uh, look into some of the actual things that are happening in the world today. So we call this few random stats in a way they're random, in a way they're not. Because the things that companies, people's individual have to do are so different, are so agile and so creative in order to 
survive in order to continue uh, working, doing the business. I don't know if anybody knew that uh, BA has been selling their lounge artwork and they have been actually raising millions. This was their uh, way to start generating some revenue. I personally didn't know that BA had so much precious artwork, but that was their creative way of coming out of the situation. I don't think anybody's surprised that the sweatpants sales went up. Uh, we, we probably have some people right now who are wearing sweatpants. I went down on, on the Fifth Avenue three days ago as I came back to New York and guess what? All the windows are selling sweatpants as opposed to fancy dresses that was before. Again, just shows the change in the consumer demand and the need. Oh, I see Sylvia's comment here. How did you know? <laughs> Don't throw the same question back to us, Sylvia. <laughs> Uh, the other interesting thing is like uh, cybersecurity, right? This was never uh, a unit or a department within the companies that would have a lot of attention. And every company these days is investing in cybersecurity, completely new reality. Uh, and the other example we have here is Postmates. I don't know if any of you is aware, this was a simple small delivery app that was started in New York when a few years ago, I remember a friend of mine said, hey, uh, do you know that you can get delivery from any restaurant that you want in the city and you know New Yorkers like to have everything at the swipe of their finger and so basically essentially this was a delivery app that would go and pick up the food from the places they don't deliver and what happens just a few months ago that Uber acquires them for insane amount of money. So to put it out there is we cannot do what we were doing before and expect that things would work and uh, it takes adaptability, it takes agility, it takes being fast, and it takes being creative in so many ways. So um, let's look into what we're all going through. So this is another term or the word that's been thrown so much these days. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. I mean, really, are we all in this together? We are in the same storm, but we are all in completely different boats. And I actually kept a copy of the FT from the last week where, you know, you probably won't see it, but basically in the same page on the top, they're talking about Monaco super rich going through COVID storm. And at the bottom, right underneath is despair at Greek migrant camp and how they're going through the COVID. So, you know, not, not that it's anything that we're not aware, but uh, we're all on different boats and we all have to think for ourselves. So what are those skills that would get us to the other side, right? This is a combination of different steering skills. And um, here you go. We wanted to throw out this dashboard of, so to say, steering skills. And uh, you probably will notice that there is no word such as uh, advanced knowledge of Excel of knowledge of machine learning, of knowledge of coding. Not that by any means I undermine any of this and personally working in the tech world, I know how those skills are important. But let's just think back, think back and even think now, some of the things that helped you to go through the storm. Uh, for me, it, it was probably a combination of sense of humor, of uh, being empathetic and, and, being, uh, and trying to stay positive. There is no right or wrong formula. I think the formula is what you make for yourself. But one of the things that this um, pandemic showed to many of us that all of this thing that we said, oh yeah, listening, empathy, vulnerability, yeah, that's, that's, that's not important, that's just given. That's not just given. Those are the things that became super important. Um, you know, speaking of the, you know, some of the things we go through. So doing this virtually is extremely difficult. This is my second or third uh, speech or conference. And, uh, you know, not having a face-to-face -face interaction, not have, being able to look into your eyes. Maybe you're already bored and you're on your phones. Maybe, you know, you're waiting, you're thinking how many slides do we have and we don't have that feedback. That's, that's tough. But we have to keep going, right? We have to like see where, what, what, you know, how we can get through this. Uh, yes, and thank you, Thomas, for saying not at all. Okay, great. So you're still with us. <laughs> all right. So then, um, what we'd like to do now is let's dive into the world of the project managers, and we picked six things. I'm sure there are probably sixty-six or even more. 
of the things that change for the PMs. And what we want to do here is to, to, okay, we will talk about all the challenges and things and further down, we want to really see, but how can you turn this reality? How can you actually take advantage? How can you see magic in this whole craziness? Um, clearly, you know, doing more with less. Yeah, your home, the, the, the lines between home and office are blurred. You know, you have to take care of so many more projects. Increased responsibility. I think for all of us, the level of responsibility went several levels up. Um, PMs are the profession or the people who need to have data. We need to do our risk analysis. We need to go through the process. We need to do all these things to say, okay, now we can make a decision. And let's just think how many times you're pushed to make rapid decisions based on incomplete data. And that's just the reality of it. And we have to do it and we have to adjust. Uh, the six is probably the favorite for everybody, this increased needs for new tools and technology. So um, I don't know, take a wild guess how many times uh, Katerina and myself together with the PMI team were testing Mentimeter and uh, take a guess what kind of uh, nerve wracking experience that was. Uh, even 15 minutes ago, some things were still not ideal. And yeah, that's, that's the stress. And every day you're thrown into yet another tool, yet another tool. Um, I tell you uh, one experience that I had, for example, like two weeks ago, I was speaking at the conference where we all were sent individual links that we had to like log in and test and do that and uh, you know, I checked my link in the morning, uh, not looking quite professional and ready for the conference. This was like three hours before my session started to only realize five minutes before that actually everything will be recorded. So the hiccups and the things within the conferences, within the new tools and all of this, it just happens left and right. And again, that's just the reality that we have to deal with. So uh, having said that uh, and having talked about our dear Mentimeter. So let's test this. So what we would like to do you right, uh, do right now is go to menti.com. This is like written on the top of the slide. Um, if you haven't uh, done the first question, then you have the code 42286337. And here you go. Yes, it works. So um, which change is impacting you the most? All right. So maybe let's wait a couple of minutes and see what people are replying. Yeah. Yeah, I see. I see a lot of increased pressure and responsibility, increased virtual interactions, totally agree where everything is happening on the screen and a lot more distraction. Um, okay, frequent changes in project scope. Okay, let's see. So we have 25% on both. Okay. Let's maybe wait another minute or so. All right, so I think the winner, so to say, in our questions is the frequent change in the scope and requiring agility, right? That that goes back to uh, what we had in our previous slides of the insane amount of pressure for being agile, for making changes. So uh, thank you for the input. Thank you for, that means you're still there, that, that you're, you're, you're listening. So let's move on. So what we would like you to do now, um, you know, we're living up to our promises that there will be a lot of interaction and things to do together. Um, you have received a worksheet that was in the, like Prasan was mentioning, in the reminder. If you don't have the worksheet, it doesn't matter. Just take a piece of paper and uh, what we want to do is just take a minute of silence here and think about those three questions, right? So what is, what is your new reality? What is it that you're going through? What is your boat? How does it look like? And uh, in that new reality, what are the shocking things that you actually can turn and think of them as an opportunities? You don't have to have an answer of what kind of an opportunities, but uh, where are the areas that you think that can be some like new things for you? 
And um, this new cows, right? It's it's a cows wherever you look. You know, uh, you don't know to which country you travel, where you need to quarantine, where you can enter, where you cannot enter. What's happening to your job? What's happening to your like life? Do you continue living in the cities or do you move to the suburbs? It is a cows, no no question. Even in a country like Switzerland, it is still a cows. And um, what are what are the things within that that excite you? So I'm going to keep quiet maybe for like another uh, a minute and uh, take time to write it down if you don't feel like it don't do that this is your workshop do what works and leave the rest okay so maybe then, um, and we're happy to have uh, any comments if anybody throughout the time wants to share something, wants to say it's uh, totally, totally welcome all the comments. And uh, so this next section, which I will pass to Katerina, we will, uh, so we talked about the world and now we want to talk about myself. Right. So I will pass it to Katerina for this next section. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. So what do we mean when talking about the core yourself, myself? What does that mean? And uh, we're here going to speak about three key pillars. And it might seem a little bit as going back to the basics, but unfortunately, even though it seems like common sense, this, these are all the areas that are not always common practice. But let's dive into health. So of course, health is, as logically you would assume, it's about being healthy and energized. And there are four key um, components of health. First, it's about being mindful about your diet. It's about what you put in your body to fuel your energy level. It's about being cautious about or if you're eating nutritious and quality food, or if you're eating food that actually drains you of energy and making you uh, feel tired, low, and drained. So to really think about what changes can you do in your diet to actually boost and start building that strong foundation? Secondly, it's about movement. It's about physical exercise, it's about sport. It's about, as they call it, sharpening your saw. Um, it's about make sure that you, mainly if you are in a job where you're sitting a lot of the time, or if you're lucky to have a standing table, I used to have one now at home office, it's, it's just the sitting. So of course, it's again, making sure you do have enough space booked in your calendar. This is what I practice, I do personally. I literally every Sunday book all my tennis, gym, and, and other sport activities in the calendars as non-negotiables because otherwise, if I don't, I just keep going 15 hours straight sitting. And of course, this is just not healthy. So again, to think for a second, can you walk or cycle to work if you still go to work? If, you, if you're at home, how do you spend your weekends? How do you spend your lunches? Can you actually have a walking lunch meeting rather than uh, just having all your meetings sitting? Um, and then it's, a, it's about sleeping. It's about being mindful about getting quality sleep because with sleep, it's unfortunately buy now, pay later kind of a deal. So you, you can't offset in a, not in a, like in a sufficient amount of sleep by eating super healthy or moving tons of the time because our brain and body needs specific amount of hours in both deep and REM, the rapid eye movement uh, sleep, to regenerate to have our muscles to regenerate, to have our memory file all the new data, to have creative creativity be boosted by the rest we give to our bodies overnight. So it's again to think for a second, do you kind of stop your car to tank gas? Because if you don't, you will run out eventually. This is of course another massive factor when we talk about being people being sick, sick rates or burnout rates. So it's really again to think about how do I, how is my sleeping pattern and do I get quality sleep? Lastly, it's about love. And here we're not talking about romantic love. It's about really doing things you love with people you love. So it can be painting, it can be meditation, it can be volunteering, helping others or spending time with your family and friends. The problem is that maintaining relationships takes time or making time for your hobbies takes time. And again, if you don't make space for it in your agenda, you, it can really slip uh, your attention very easily. So it really is also all of that 
com combined infuses the right dose of oxytocin, endorphine, serotonin, and other hormones into your system to boost your energy level. Um, moving into the second pillar, and this is the support system. So it's about spending the time with the right people on the right thing. So what do we mean here by people is to think for a second, who do you surround yourself with? Do you surround yourself with people who complain, judge, tell you that you won't make it, that you will fail? Or do you spend time with those who inspire you, motivate you, uh, challenge you, believe in you? And because in the end, you are the five people you spend most time with. So really being cautious about who, who is, which network of friends or colleagues do I have around myself? Um, secondly, it's about technology. And we're, of course, in a, a living in a time of digital disruption and turbulence. And so technology has a massive opportunity for us to become much more efficient. There are so many tools, platforms, apps out there that can give us speed and efficiency. I personally, would, my life would be a mess if I would not use Asana project management tool or Calendly for scheduling. But of course, as every coin has two sides. Technology also created a massive amount of distractions for us. So we actually, we gain efficiency, but we get so many distractions whenever, I'm not sure about you, but I have so many WhatsApp chats that keep popping that um, for me, the solution was really to put myself, my phone on airplane mode when I needed to really focus and get into the flow and work on a specific project to, to not be disturbed or the, um, having a routine of not checking emails or having the email window open the whole day, but actually just checking it three times a day and so on. So um, it's really about thinking of the technology that can help, but that also can be a distra distraction or disruption for me at this stage. And third is focus. And it's really, I cannot stress more the importance to be in charge of your agenda and list of priorities. Because if, if you're not, people will fill in the agenda for you. So it's really to think about, do you just say yes to everybody and uh, believe it or not, everybody tells you, oh, can you give me, do me a favor? Can you do that? Can you help me with that? And usually the urgency for them is super high, right? They want it like yesterday or like immediately or tonight. And then you do all of these favors, but realize you have not even started with your priority list. So it's really to think about where should you say no? What should you eliminate completely from your, from your list? What can you automate with the technology? And also what is your priority? So now I would, before jumping into the third pillar, I would like you to take a, one, two minutes to really think about which, looking at these two pillars, health and your support system, what change? It can be one small tweak that you can do this week, this month, or this year that would be helpful for you. It can be just in one of the buckets that we, where you could make most impact. Anna, do you have any, any of yours that you can share here? I'm putting you on the, on the spot, but for inspiration, maybe, is I'll there see. anything? Well, I can personally, I will go first because uh, I know I put you uh, on the spot. I know, it's fine, it's fine. I think, I think you know, it was, it was great mentioning of the, the technology tools, uh, yeah. you know, and uh, I think I, I personally can, exp can like share that pain, sh share that, you know, anxiety that, you know, how many like places that you have to check your messages. It's Slack, it's Skype, it's Teams, it's Zoom, it's WhatsApp. And I know it's not always like manageable, but, you know, probably like that would be if I was to choose one thing that would be for me to streamline the tools that I'm using and how many places am I taking mm. notes. So that's, that's for sure would apply. Absolutely. We have Daniel here commenting early to bed, early to rise. Absolutely. Go to bed at nine and, and then join the 5 a.m. club. Plan a regular work, play, rest schedule. Absolutely key. Because what you don't plan, you don't execute. At least that works for me. And uh, for me, health bucket, definitely stop eating my lunch at the computer. Uh, it's very non, not mindful. Um, support system is definitely also a technology bucket for me to have even less distraction. Wonderful. Okay. Of course, feel free to continue uh, filling in those uh, also after. Oh, no, sugar is really difficult. I oh, know, but, <laughs> but 
I, I will send you a recipe for a no sugar cake I just made last week. It's actually not so bad. My dad said it's disgusting, but um, you can't please everybody. Um, walk more and sit less. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay. Let's move on to the third pillar, mindset. And of course, you might have heard that there is this conscious and subconscious mind. And even though there is a little bit of a hint in the image already, which one do you think controls most of our actions today? Like how, what do you think is the, the biggest driver, the conscious and the subconscious? And to make the question even more tricky, um, and please be careful in the chat to submit to all panelists and attendees so that everybody can see your uh, replies. I respect the opinion of your dad. Okay, we need to speak, Valerius. <laughs> um, how much percentage-wise? What do you think is the division? Like 50-50, 40 -50, Like, what do you think is the split between the two? So please give me a quick tip. Okay, okay, 70, we're going, oh, 70, 80, 20, 10, 90, 20, okay. Okay, exactly. So some of you already guessed it right. Oh, we would love 50-50, oh, well, almost, almost got it, Milos. Um, so it's actually only 10%, uh, some of you guessed correctly, that um, is driven by our conscious mind, which is pretty scary because this is our rational mind. This is our willpower, critical thinking, short-term memory, and it's incredible 90% that is subconscious driven. It's the beliefs, our emotions, um, deep ingrained uh, habits, desires, fears, values, and so on, that of course drive all those actions. And when you think about it, when you don't know which bucket is my decision coming from, when you put yourself in the ideal of everything is pink world, everything goes well, you, you're, you're very grounded in the rational mind here. You have time, everything is going well. You can make decisions. But if, you're, if your project is on fire and you're troubleshooting, you're delayed, you're stressed, you're under immense pressure, this is exactly the moment when we automatically fall into reacting from the subconscious mind. So these are all the autopilot protective, uh, autopilot reactions and uh, protective reactions that we have. So already... So when speaking about mindset and what actually, when you think about mindset shifts, any mindset shift starts with awareness and awareness that we have this 10 and 90 guiding and ruling our decisions and actions, and also to understand what's holding us back. And this is all the, the list that we have seen. And of course, we can't go into the detail in all of them, unfortunately. Um, but let's have a look at just fear. So what four key uh, fears can be holding you back? So I would say a very common one, fear of failure. This is when you live very cautiously. You don't start anything new. You don't take on that new big project because just what if you fail? Uh, because that would intensify the feeling of being inadequate. So you don't see failure really as a first opportunity in learning, as they quoted, but you really fear that you're going to get burned. Second fear of rejection, again, you don't apply even for that promotion or that new job or, or any kind of uh, role because you fear being rejected, intensifying the I'm not good enough feeling. Fear of embarrassment, uh, please give me in the chat um, uh, ha, ha, or like a thumbs up or something, a yes. If you've been in a situation in a meeting or in a conference and then at the end, somebody, the presenter, the moderator, they ask, oh, uh, any questions? And automatically from your gut, there is a question that you're, that you're really, you, you would love to get an answer to, but then you're like, oh shoot, what, what if it's a really stupid question? What if, what would people think about me and laugh about me? So you, rather than to risk it, you, you stay, you remain silent and you're like, hmm, no, never mind. Let's just not stand out of the crowd. So uh, exactly. There are no stupid questions, but of course, still the fear that we are going to be put on the spot and laughed at or sound stupid. Um, uh, remains as kind of remain, uh, we then decide to remain silent. And the funniest thing that what happens after, I think that's kind of karma, is that somebody asks a really kind of stupid question <laughs> and you're like, oh, my question was so much better. But anyway, so it's again to, to start thinking about our actions because this is all autopilot usually. And then of course the last one, fear of change, uncertainty, job loss. And that's, that's unfortunately these days, 
corona or no corona, you never have the security 100%, right? We believe we do, but we never do uh, 100%. And it's fear of change is, of course, the fear of unknown. And it's unfortunately, a lot of people, it's natural that we see change as something bad. We see we're going to lose, but we, the only thing we're losing is the known. So it's, it's about shifting from looking at the uncertain, dark, uh, kind of no, no light at the end of the tunnel, um, but actually being excited about the new stuff. So to, to tell yourself instead of like, oh my God, what I'm going to do is like, oh my God, how many exciting, cool new stuff are in front of me? Like I'm doing great. Maybe I can do even better. There might be even a better role. You know, if I lose this role, can you imagine there's even a much better, exciting role for me out there? Um, but of course, like look at the two key approaches to, to mindset shifts. And there are two kind of schools of thoughts I would like to cover quickly. The first one is conscious business mindset. I'm a big, big fan of that one, where you have two key mindset shifts. The first from victim and player. And I'll give you just a very simple example. So you imagine you're, you have your meeting with your client, let's say still face to face, and you get late to the meeting. The victim would react of, oh, I'm sorry, but the, the, he blames all the, the traffic. He blames the roadworks. No, there were not enough parking. Somebody even took my last spot. Like, what a teat. I can't say that word. We're being recorded. So it's being helpless. He just blames the environment. And then the player, in the same situation, he would take responsibility. So he would say, look, sorry for being late. It was my poor planning. I should have had a 30-minute buffer. And next time, when they are both in the same situation yet again, the player is going to be on time because he learned from it. And uh, the victim is going to be trapped in the same excuse again and usually remains to be late and blaming the situation. The second is the knower uh, and the learner mindset. So the knower, again, please, anybody who knows the knower <laughs> out there is the person who knows it all. It's why we're on the highway, he comes, you come to a project meeting and you, there's no discussion. It's like, oh, we're gonna do this. And they're like, well, well, that doesn't make sense. But there's no discussion. These people are, of course, um, not open. They're very driven by their ego. They're very protective of what, um, if somebody else would have a better idea that would threaten their authority and their, their, the perception people have about the person. Uh, I know all of them. <laughs> Oh God, you need to change your, uh, the people around you soon. Um, and so they, there's no question asked. It's just impose and leave. The learner on the contrary values the power of collective team kind of knowledge co-creation. So they, he seeks or she seeks the, she knows that my, my view is very limited. What, what do you think guys? He listens, values discussion. Uh, and even if there is the best solution and it comes from, the receptionist or anybody who is actually even out of the business, it would not be dismissed. It's really kind of keeping an open mind and valuing the collective mindset. Um, so the second uh, school of thought is the growth versus the fixed mindset. And here it's a bit similar, but of course the growth um, person with a growth mindset loves and sees the power in learnability. I can learn anything if I put my effort in it. I see failure and challenge as the opportunity to learn and grow. A uh, person who loves feedback, cherishes the process, loves to try new things. But on the contrary, a person with a fixed mindset says, I'm born this way, I can't do anything with it, I can't change my genetics, I'm, I'm good at it or not. There is no room for kind of trying or, or learning or changing how you are created. So if something gets tough or if they get challenged, they don't feel comfortable, they bail out, they give up, and they usually love to stick what, to what they know. And um, they, don't love, they don't like to get out of their comfort zone. And of course, this, in my view, is exactly the issue that they then get trapped in this deadly comfort zone where so many people out there are so scared of um, fearing to fly too high and kind of get burned. Uh, and fail that they don't realize they're actually flying so low their whole life they're flying so low that they never fulfill their true full potential so what happens for them is that they never experience the magic that actually happens out of the comfort zone 
So to conclude, it's really, I would like to leave you with, we don't see things the way they are. We see things the way we are. So it's really about how, which lens of glasses I'm looking at the world and looking at my responsibility to the challenges that come my way. Because life in the end is just a series of challenges, speed bumps and mountains to be climbed, not only in Switzerland. So again, I would love to invite you for a quick reflection and to think for yourself, out of which mindset do I usually react from? And be absolutely honest, nobody sees your answer, like nobody's perfect. I don't say, you know, I'm in the player and um, uh, learner mindset, mind, like 100% of my day. Hell no, I also go back to sometimes being the victim and poor me, it's nice, we like to pity ourselves, right? Um, but it's, it's just being aware of it, mind, mindful about it, and then it's when you can proactively change and make move to a different mindset shift. Exactly, thank you, Ev. Um, so which, what mindset shift do I want to achieve for myself? And of course, which fear is holding me back these days? So I think let's take a few seconds here. And I don't know if you have any, any own reflections here to share. I'm going gonna go back to the Mentimeters. It was the fear for, for like, you know, just thinking of this presentation. You know, it was a fear of using the new tool for us, right? We want to have come across per perfect professional, all of it. So we've been working with the PMI team and you know how many times, you know, Katerina and myself are like, no, 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 let's, let's keep this simple. Let's not like do the new tool. And then you realize, you know, once you actually like overcome it, Yes, that, that, that works. That's great. Well, we'll see. We'll see at the end of the presentation. I'm telling you, we're going to so buy menti Mentimeter shares. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Wonderful. Well, of course, you can always uh, complete uh, your reflections after over the weekend. I mean, weeks. And uh, now with my pleasure, I'm going to hand over back to Anna, who's going to open up the section three, Mastering the Connector Role. Okay, great. Thank you, Katerina. Okay, well, uh, I think all of this was done in order to come to this last section that, okay, well, knowing all of this, using all of this, getting all this information, how can we actually use this in our advantage? Actually, I'm going to read the, one of the comments. The worst fear is that what you're going to say, propose, is going to be ignored like you've never talked. Absolutely agree. And in a way that goes back to our own egos, right? We want yeah. to be heard. We want to be, uh, you know, understood. We want our opinions to matter. And okay, well, what if it's not? Absolutely. It's not, what if it is ignored? Maybe it is, maybe it is not. And we but don't the know. problem is that if you don't voice, if you don't, if you don't voice your opinion, you will never know. Because I think it's also an assumption that you're going to be ignored. I think it's, it's from private life experience. It's like in dating. How do you know the girl or the guy is going to reject you if you don't go and try to say hello, right? So I think it's also not having the assumptions how we assume people are going to behave this or that way, but they can surprise us. And I think it's also good to give them a chance to surprise us. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, back to PM yeah. triangle, right. the, the exciting so stuff. <laughs> Back to PM triangle, but I uh, you know we promise that this is this is not the only triangle that you're going to see on this slide. So what we want to do in this section, so now let's go back to you, your role, and how can you use all of this to your advantage, to uh, secure your role, to actually not just secure, but to make it more fun, to make it more valuable, and to take to take advantage of it. So um, obviously we all know the, uh, the traditional PM triangle, which defines the scope of the work of the project manager's budget, scope and time. That's what the uh, PMs control. And uh, uh, the question I'm going to throw out there to the group is, does anybody know when this was put in place? Like just take a guess, what, what year was this introduced? I know you can Google it, but let's see if anybody. <laughs> no cheating. Yeah, Ooh. Ooh, well, okay, we see 50s, we see, okay, 50, 50, 65. Yeah, absolutely correct. So 1950, right? Like how many years ago? And since then, this has not changed. 
So what we have done is we've taken this liberty and boldness and um, you know, we've defined our own triangle for the purposes of this workshop, but maybe it's also going to serve for the purposes of, uh, you know, your career, your role, your life. And uh, we said that the three things that define the quality are the trust, authenticity, and competence. And um, those are the things, uh, those are not tangible things. Those are not the things that you can actually like, you know, put in place and, uh, and then, but those are actually the components that define the success, define your, um, you know, your authenticity, define your trust, and define so many things for you, for your clients, and for your peers. So what I would like to do is to start going into each one of the sections, again, give you some pointers, talk about it, and, and then at the end, happy to hear all the comments and questions. Um, let's look into the next slide. All right, so trust, right? It's such a, it's such an like so so easy set and so hard to achieve. Like what 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 is trust, right? Uh, we know truth builds trust. We know time builds trust. Uh, we have here that trust is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability of strengths of someone or something. This is actually the definition from the Wikipedia. And um, you don't build trust overnight. You don't build trust in one day. This is just something that is very hardly earned. And uh, there's so many components that define it. Uh, so here at the bottom, you have a sort of a laundry list of few things that you know we thought that, okay, these are the things that constitute trust. And I want to give you a few examples because if these are just definitions that they don't mean much, uh, so I want to give you an example of, for example, on um, showing up. When the whole Corona crisis started and when lockdown started, uh, the CEO of my company started showing up on almost ev almost every meeting with his uh, senior middle managers and also with his junior teams. So he would randomly pop in into like meetings here and there but the areas where he was not present in uh, many, many meetings before, because obviously, you know, his agenda is completely packed. He suddenly was, was there. And that just created an incredible effect. Um, we too, too, yeah, we do too, exactly. And that just was showing up, right? These are not ju just words, this was, ju this was the actions that he was doing. Um, shoulder to lean on so many different ways so many different uh you know methods that you can do that for me personally it was um again throughout the whole lockdown my um, yoga teacher transformed all her uh, classes online right and every day she was there and she was she was presenting an incredible classes an incredible uh, you know, incredible, like one and a half hour. This was a mix of a meditation and the workout and everything. And uh, this was a shoulder for me personally to lean on. Uh, the other one, um, can everybody see the screen? Or I, are you still sharing, Katerina? Uh, Yeah, the slides, we cannot see the slide. Yeah, okay, now it's back. Okay, good, thank you. Um, I, everybody can see it, right? We just lost the slides for a second. Let me see, technology, that's right. Yeah, we see, pre we see the presenter view, including notes, correct. Uh, well, this is this is technology. Okay, we still see the notes. We still see the the notes, but it's okay. I will I will continue. Yeah, now we don't see it. Okay. <laughs> 
some of the stories <laughs> received for Katerina's cake on the notes. Yes, we will share that after the after the workshop. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's okay. You you can you can see this uh, the the build trust slide. So and then um, you know authentic communications. We'll talk a little bit more about that later. But uh, you know, for me, for example, one of the things that. Um, that I did and that resonated really well uh, throughout the uh, lockdown. I had to have a presentation to a client, which was a very, it was a very difficult relationship with a client. And I thought, okay, I'm going, and I was supposed to give them a workshop. So what I did is I invited my 12 year old niece to be part of my presentation. And uh, she had a couple of slides from her own where she was sharing the tips that she learned in her school and how that affected, uh, how that affected her and what she has learned. And it was incredible the way this relationship with that customer improved. So these are just one of many, many, many examples that uh, you know that we can have, that we can apply. Uh, and those are the elements that build uh, trust, right? So what um, I want to emphasize here is you are the PM in the position to use your power. You can do all of these things without really thinking all the time, okay, this is what I'm doing to have the success of my project. This is what I'm doing to build the trust. But doing that every day, day after day, it actually will do all of those things. Uh, so let's see what we have on our Zoom kicked you out. Okay, no, you're back. <laughs> I think it's all it's all good all good I have a big apology <laughs> yes. all right let's go to the next slide great uh, what I wanted to uh, mention here is, uh, and we we, we we joked with Katerina about it, that being a PM, you're almost like a James Bond of your company, having an access to so many pillars, so many uh, layers. You can talk to your vendors, to your peers, to your senior management, to your clients, and all of those uh, components where you can leverage your reach, not only leverage, but also expand, uh, you know, are you, are you using your full power? Are you actually exercising it and um, acting on that? That's actually pretty cool that you are, you are realizing it and you're starting to use it more and more. And that contributes obviously to your success of your projects, to the, to the health of your company. So what I would not think in your daily job, okay, I need to do this for the success of my project. Do this because you are in the position. Do it because you can. And then gradually it will bring you this, uh, this new reality, this new exciting reality. Um, let's talk about now this, this whole notion of communicating from the heart, right? We, we never learned this in school, right? We learn about uh, we learn about how to properly communicate in several languages. We learn about how to think logically. We, uh, we learn how to do the puzzle. So everything that we learn, it all comes from the brain. But somehow the difference makes the communications that come from the heart. And uh, I'm going to just give a couple of examples, right? Uh, let's think about Martin Luther King's speeches, right? All of his speeches were coming from the heart. And immediately, probably all of you have in mind, you know, I had a dream uh, and uh, many others. And that was from the heart. That was not from, from the brain. The other one of my favorite ones is Steve Jobs' graduation speech when he talks about how the dots will connect in the future. There's no logic in that. There's more everything that he's feeling with his heart and what kind of a difference that makes. So I would invite you to try to bring that into your work, into your uh, daily tasks, into your uh, life, if, not, if you're not already doing it. And also, uh, let's not make so much separation of all of this soft stuff that's for the friends, that's for the family, that's for like, you know, the other group. And then when we come to workspace, then we have to be the superheroes. No, we don't because we're the same people. So we did have a hiccup three minutes ago. It's okay, it, it happens. I think you're still, you're all still here. Uh, we're still, we're still in it. 
and um, those are the things that will make a difference. So now we have a long laundry list of some of the concrete things that you could do to communicate from your heart. It's a long list. Uh, again, see what resonates, see what speaks to you and uh, apply what works. Try it out, have fun with it. Don't let it overwhelm you, play with it and then see what sticks. Um, to look at, let's look what's the first one. Okay. So what, uh, the first one, let's try to go away from talking, talking, talking. Again, it's uh, just because you speak a lot, it doesn't mean that, you know, your voice is hard. It doesn't mean your position is stronger. It doesn't mean that, but those are all the things that we have in our minds. Oh, I need to raise a hand. I need to ask the question. And that means something. It doesn't always. Sometimes it's actually good to be 100% present. And by present, it can be just listening, just being there. Uh, one of the examples could be for, you know, going towards this 100% presence is try a no phone and no laptop policy in the meetings. Easier said than done. We all think that we can multitask between 20, 20 things. We can be in a meeting and then text and plan our dinner and talk to the kids and all that. But we're human. The minute you drop something, your attention goes away, right? Hard to accomplish during COVID times. Absolutely agree. Uh, but maybe there is a way to try it, not for the entire time, but like give yourself like time slots, right? 10 minutes, 20 minutes, uh, you know, what, whatever that, that would work. But no laptop, nearly impossible in our digital time. Of course, the, the no laptop meeting is not possible in a, in a COVID time. Yes, 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 totally agree. But maybe if you, the day when we go back to the offices, the day that you are meeting with your teams, that can be a no laptop, but absolutely agree. Okay, so the next one, is uh, curiosity. A lot of times we're running so much in our world, in our circles, especially in our projects, when we think that I know it all, I know it all, like, you know, I know how this works. Don't tell me like, you know, uh, what to do because, you know, we are, all, we are in this like uh, zone and the circle. And asking good questions, even in the space which you know absolutely well can open an incredible like doors for you can be like, you know, uh, can be a very interesting and like a learning experience for yourself. And sometimes it's good to think like if you are assuming that I know it all and that applies to like all of us. So then what are the facts that I take into? Where are, where are my assumptions based on? And the really good questions, not just the questions can actually like um, uh, confirm those assumptions. Um, yeah, let's go to the next one. So humanity, I think everything that we've been talking here today touches on the humanity and empathy and uh, acknowledging some of the things that are happening. And a lot of times we just assume, right? We assume for the people, we don't think what they're going through. We don't put uh, ourselves into their shoes. And that is for a variety of reasons. Maybe because we don't have time, maybe because we don't feel like it and so on and so forth. And sometimes just taking a step back and saying, okay, well, what if that would have happened to me? Like what, how would I react? Do I know all the facts around it? And maybe this person in front of me goes through a certain pain that uh, this, that's the reason why he or she is acting from that space. Uh, and uh, okay, directness, speaking your truth and being specific. We know how many people, like all of us, have these people who, who have a hard time speaking about tough topics. And uh, usually that ends into the conversations which are vague, which are fluffy, which is really like beating around the bush and not getting to the point. And sometimes because it's hard to have this conversation, it's hard to let employee go. It's hard to like say your project will not continue. But being direct and actually acknowledging that this is a hard topic to do and actually getting to the point will a save you so much time save you so much energy and it doesn't have to be so such extremes as letting somebody go or or getting rid of the project it could be like a, a smaller conversation but trying to be direct 
again, our time is so much pushed towards the online, towards Zoom, everything is happening. So wherever you can use this directness, that, that definitely would be helpful. Okay, I think now it's, um, unfortunately, again, apologies for the hiccup. I still have makeup on and I don't wear sweatpants, but I'm unable to put my video on, but my face is the same as uh, half an hour ago. So let's continue with the list. And uh, the fifth element uh, to communicate from your heart is uh, to also practice vulnerability. And I think at least for me, it was very uh, uncomfortable. I think it's a combination of Czech culture or me being raised up that you, you don't say you don't know or that you need help. You're, you're strong, you're, you don't need anybody else. You're a tough cookie, right? And you can, of course, try to fake it until you maybe make it, but uh, that doesn't work that way. And it's actually funny because people, people first of all, love to ha help. And they also, when they see you're vulnerable, they can relate to you because they are vulnerable even if they don't show it themselves. Oh, thank you, Christopher. <laughs> thank you for the compliment. I actually blushed now, if you could see over <laughs> the camera. Um, so it's about openly sharing your fear of, for example, project delay, running over budget, um, or about the struggle to finish on time or asking your colleagues just to give you a hand, not being the superhero. The sixth one is the building personal connections, getting personal, because we mainly with, when you have limited time, you're like, uh, you, we meet with Anna and we're like, okay, 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 the, the workshop, okay, let's do that, da, 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 da. and then we're like, Jesus Christ, like, how are you? How was your trip to, to New York? How are you feeling? You know, how, like actually doing some kind of a check-in, but maybe on a uh, less structured way to connect as, as two humans and then to bring personal stories into conversations so that you, when you ask yourself, like, do you know who, like how, what's the name of the kids of your colleagues and or their dogs or cats or whatever pets, or do you know about their private lives? Do you know what the, the fears of your client is apart from the project? But so really to connect as a, a great saying says, connect on a human level before you dive into any context of the meeting or before you dive into any content of a meeting discussion or of the project. And then we all love to be surprised and uh, to when people kind of go beyond, when they surprise us by doing something that is actually not on their to-do list. It's not their job description. So they go an extra mile. So it's uh, it can be something very simple as just reminding your teammates how important they are or celebrating them or unexpectedly praising them for something they have done or surprising your client with just a birthday card or a thank you lunch invitation or extra help or extra support here and there because it's it's really in the end, when you think about it, it's not about what you said or did. And if nobody would remember you for making, you know, uh, yet another Excel sheet uh, or, or creating another file, it's really about how you make people feel. This is what people remember the most. So now speaking about, oh, is there an add an error? I think that maybe kicked me out. It was <laughs> Mentimeter. <laughs> Okay, let's use the chat, please. If we can use the chat, looking at the list of all these seven elements, can you share which one, which tactic would actually bring most value to you? Which one do you think, where would you change something? Oh, good, Valerius, see? And do you go an extra mile? That's another question. Saying it and doing it is, are two different things. We say curiosity, connection, yes, good. Presence, uh, presence, vulnerability, curiosity, di being direct, vulnerability, vulnerability, directness, presence, connection. So you see another connection, humanity. Absolutely, Monica, connection. So of course, all of these, again, goes back to what, what Anna was mentioning at the beginning, right? It's not about the, the hard skills. It's more about the soft skills that actually these days make a massive difference. So now moving to the third element of the triangle. Um, definitely, I just see uh, the question about caring for others. Absolutely. Uh, genuinely caring for others, I would say. You don't ask people how they are just to tick the box, right? 
uh, walk the talk. Absolutely. Absolutely. So moving to the competent and how do you show, develop, grow competence? So of course you can do that in your PM role. It's really where we in, would encourage you to think outside of the box and actually own own your reality, own your future, be in control so that you can think of what can you do? Can you offer your PM knowledge internally to, to your peers, to senior management, to clients? Can you be proactive in organizing, for example, a, a PM happy hour, share best practice, uh, set up a company-wide newsletter, or actually dig into the vast amount of digital uh, resources, learning resources and courses out there, or can you use and leverage and jump on the wave of the no border reality, mainly if you're working for larger organizations, what stops you from connecting with colleagues in another city, country or continent? Um, secondly, it's thinking about your exposure and that can be with senior management or in another company if you're looking for um, another role to really see, start spotting the gaps and, and telling, suggesting a solution, even if it's not in your job description, to, to, because this is how you stand out of the crowd. We actually would encourage you to stand out of the crowd and get in, um, engaged, even if it's for a little volunteer time, being proactive to really manage your um, initiatives in-house in to get more exposure and in that way shape your role. And lastly, it's also to think about how can you create even more value outside of your role? So how can you use your learnings or uh, all your know-how and expertise to share it with um, in your private lives, you know, for projects at home, projects with friends, kids, neighbors in your community? Um, can you use some of the templates? Can you get involved? Um, and to really get creative in leveraging all you know to put it into even more value creation. So again, here we would like to stop for a second and think about if you can think for yourself, um, how can you boost your trust, authentic communication and competence? Where can you use your connector skills to really bring more security to your role without being overwhelmed? Because of course, you, we believe you are overwhelmed already. Uh, so we don't want to create that effect. We actually want to create more ease and efficiency for you. And who can benefit from my uh, project management skills or my skills in general? So again, feel free to use the worksheet and note, take a minute to really think about what can, what is real, what would be helpful for me. And thank you for the reminder. We're aware, I think we're perfectly on time. So, so really we would like to conclude to, to have get you thinking of what if, what if you could actually be the architect of your role, uh, of your project, of your, of your future, of the project processes and the redesign in, in, in a way even also from scratch. So what would it look like for you? And also why don't you try? Like what is the worst case scenario that could happen? Because again, we would love you to get the feeling that you are actually in control and you shape your future. And with that, I will uh, love to open the Q&A. So please uh, don't be shy, shoot and uh, use the Q&A directly if you can or the chat, whatever, which one ever uh, works for you and we'll be happy to answer any questions before we close and hand over back to Vassan. So please. Oh, here we go. First question: How do cultural differences play? How do cultural differences play into these topics? Anna, do you want to take this one or? Sure, sure. Um, yes, it's a great question. Thank you. I think you know. 
uh, directness is tricky. Yes, absolutely, absolutely agree. And you know, like if I even if I would compare the way uh, people communicate in uh, let's let's just take you know my personal experience, like New York and and Zurich, and uh, this is a completely different. What comes across very natural, like you know, here might come across like wood. Or I work with the, a lot with a South American culture where if you don't do like you know five minutes of like you know how are you and checking in then that that again comes across rude and have create creates an opposite effect i think it's absolutely important to understand those cultural differences take it into account and be mindful of that and maybe refer to that right like if you are uh, if you are coming from a different culture you can always like put that out there and say hey i'm i'm sorry if that felt rude or something because i i have that a lot of times from my coworkers in south america who say is everything okay and then i just have to like you know take a deep breath go back and say yes i'm i'm sorry this is this is just how it is nothing personal and you just put it out there and you know saying i'm sorry if something went against the culture that's absolutely fine uh, the more you are aware and more you can adjust that's that's only your advantage but also you know while explaining that you go back and you you be direct and you say that i am aware that in this culture blah 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 however what i would like to convey and then you get to the topic so that's what i do personally and uh, sometimes takes more time, sometimes less. Yes, absolutely. I think it's um, cultural differences, of course, um, make a play a role. But again, of course, even directness needs to be with a big dose of being direct, but being respectful, right? So it's not about being rude, uh, but still taking the cultural differences into consideration. Absolutely. We have another question from Valerius. Um, Slide 27, I love the structure. Um, most powerful PM would be a healthy combination of player and learner. Um, absolutely, I would say not only most powerful PM, I think it makes our lives as humans. Uh, it's a most powerful combination for a human being. And uh, I personally switching my mindset, I've felt a massive improvement in you know how, then you, in a way when you see yourself as the architect of your own life, you, you, you actually, you know, you own it and you, you enjoy it much more than that, oh, this life happens to me, poor me, and uh, I need to know it all. You actually realize you don't and you start valuing diverse opinions and you, you becoming a learner, you actually bring the best out of other people. So if you're leading a project with other people in there, you would also see once you shift attention and encourage others to get into that mindset, how that would lift the whole energy and spirit of the team. And that gives a massive push to the project itself. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Um, question, question from Christopher, I guess it's not a show. Do you yeah. have a good strategy yeah. to remind myself to maintain the right mindset? Sometimes I remember out of the blue and it's great, but sometimes I would have benefited uh, from a reminder. Um, Anna, do you, have, do, do you want me to answer this one? You go, go ahead. I'll take the next okay. one. Okay. Okay. Um, it's, I think it's, you know, when it depends on the stress you're, you're in, honestly, sometimes it's like, oh man, I'm again in the victim. It becomes in a way like, um, like a game, you, you suddenly have a voice uh, in your head telling you, oh, you, oh, it's like Britney Spears kind of song. Oops, I did it again. So um, you can never achieve, I would say, 100 hit rate. I think that would take a lot of Buddha practice sitting somewhere in a cave um, in the darkness. But um, good strategy. Uh, definitely, there's tons of strategies. We're going to show some um, some tips on learning and video and books, uh, which has a lot of strategies in it. And I'm happy to also uh, elaborate on that and send you some, some tips uh, after, to, to all of you, some tips afterwards in the session, because just being cautious of time. Yes, yeah, so maybe we can take two or three more questions and yeah. then everything else. Uh, please type your questions. What we're going to do is we will prepare a, we will prepare a write-up of our thoughts and we will share it with you. So whatever we don't get through, we'll definitely get back to you. Uh, from Christopher, any ideas how we can conduct meaningful project team building exercises in this virtual COVID world? 
Yes, absolutely. You know, it's it's tough because we are all so sick and tired of our uh, screens and we want to have some kind of uh, like, you know, fresh breath. So as much as you can bring the real time, real life into your um, uh, team building, that would be the most like, you know, ideal. Try to think about it as a game. Try to think about it where everyone has to do something. And by doing something, it's more something fun. Uh, try to like, you know, engage people. And, you know, it doesn't have to, it, it's, it doesn't have to have a presentation, but it needs to be like, you know, as soon as it's this whole gamification comes into play where people are like engaged and they're playing, they're forgetting that they are uh, sitting in front of their screen. You know, like I was mentioning, bringing my 12-year-old uh, into a workshop just had a fun effect because suddenly it was a totally different interaction when they were asking, you know, the questions, oh, and how do you do with this tool and how that. So think about like completely different things that you would have never done. And sometimes mm -hmm. even like blurring those lines between like, you know, work, home, space, that that helps. Um, mm -hmm. We had an idea on doing like virtual like PM happy hours. So it can be a happy hour where I don't know, somebody will have a margarita, but somebody will have a glass of water, somebody will have a detox juice, but you still like have this mm -hmm. notion of where we're drinking together. Uh, so Absolutely. those are the quick things. And, and, ex and exactly we, we what we have done a lot is that there is you can't start with directly diving into the content and the, the context of the meeting, you really, you have to share one fun fact about you and then you have a list of these you have a really a list after a list of funny questions or funny personal questions to get to know like what what you know your whatever uh, favorite uh, pet or uh, what happened when you were a child like uh, re rebellious stories from the school like we all have them or at least i have them um and uh, so there's tons tons of that and i, I see Milos, he's mentioned these coffee breaks in the video. Exactly. When my, um, a lot of my friends having families um, and kids. So for the couple to bond together, they actually have one session or session, like a date in the evening, during the day, whatever, that they have a rule that they can't speak about household logistics, admin bills and kids. And I think applying something similar to business uh, makes a massive difference. So there's no, you, you ban yourself from actually for 15 minutes, there's no project client discussion. It's fully focused on how, how are we and what's happening in our private lives. Yeah, cool. Uh, maybe we take one more question, yeah, from Monica, and then we'll leave the last five minutes for the wrap up. Uh, so Monica here, you're saying, how would you manage relationships with difficult personalities, push back approach, rude answers, lack of cooperation? Yeah, great question. And, you know, we can we can have a whole different workshop on having the difficult conversations mm. and talk for hour, you know, but just one quick thing is, just acknowledging and putting it out there that this is a difficult relationship that uh, you know you are experiencing a rude approach or you are experiencing lack of cooperation put it out there like at the very beginning you know sometimes believe it or not people are not even aware that they're rude they think that that's that's fine and uh, you know it could be cultural but can be like that's just maybe their game and manipulation but when you actually put it in front of their their face so to say and uh, then that creates a different effect then they drop that guard and it becomes mm -hmm. a little bit easier to have those conversations absolutely and i think it's also to understand that you will never be able to change who they are you can only change your reaction to it so it's not spending too much of your energy to like re having on mantra in your head, like Ugh, an awful person yet, yet you already assume how the person's going to react. So it's a combination. Also what helps is to just accept the person is that way and being curious, maybe um, asking some good questions or checking your inferences because a lot of the time they react out of their own fears. You know, that's the, that's the kind of saddest part of, of that. When you, when you ask a few good questions, sometimes they open up that, you know, their root answer is just the way how they're trying to save face. So actually being also having empathy and curiosity, asking some good questions and, and in a way sending them love uh, helps to, to remove the pain out of it and rather think about it like, what can I learn from this person? Because I believe every person that crosses our path actually brings some kind of learning and they're going to be difficult people out there. So it's really great to learn how to handle those and not have them suck your energy, of course. Yeah, absolutely. 
I see we have a few questions. So as, as yeah, Anna mentioned, um, I like the, the request for the time when you felt applying these concepts. Um, absolutely, when I'm driving in Prague, um, I go into um, the uh, combination of victim and, <laughs> and player, but I can, um, I'll be happy to, let's, let's have a, um, I can't say the word, the F word night. Um, uh, we we can have uh, we can have in another session uh, and with some margaritas for sure. Um, yeah, we can always but, have a separate session on you know just just the Q and A and and talk about it because yeah, I see the question absolutely. about the applying PM triangle to corporate companies eager to see profit. Absolutely good one and great one. And all I can say is that if you do those things. You will build your trust. You will generate success for your project, and then that will like go towards the profits. But again, you know, it's the time exactly. is not enough to talk about all that. Okay, Anna. Yeah. So I mean, clearly, we tried to pack a lot of things in this like hour and a half, and everything that we talked about here. Uh, was coming from our personal experiences of trying, doing, failing, not doing it so well, adjusting. And uh, we're happy to, you know, have a separate session. We're happy to uh, speak to you and help you on a variety of all these different topics, starting from, okay, how do you architect your new role, right? What if you were to put new project roles, new triangle, all these things that have been there for like 50 years and nobody questioned it. Maybe we can question them together in the, in the project, uh, in, the, in the session. We also uh, do a lot of work in the business development, which is like, you know, project management and business development to us is a very, very intertwined thing because with every new project, you're developing your relationship, you're putting them to the next level. So um, the list is long and, uh, you know, judging from the questions, we saw that there could be some interest. So, you know, if you're interested, you have our emails, LinkedIn, and, you know, maybe we'll do another session with uh, PMI. Actually, there will be a feedback form. So please put in uh, what would be of interest for you in a next session or in a different session. And then uh, we're happy to look into and give another one. And then uh, we will share the slides. So here are also just some very quick uh, tips and recommendations from books that we love, from uh, videos that we love. I actually also have here my all time favorite. This is Ray Dalio's Principles. And a lot of times when I am going through those difficult like, conversations or projects, I tap in into that, that book and many others. Again, that would be in the deck shared to you. And uh, with that, I guess uh, we just have to thank, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for taking time in the evening. A huge, huge thank you for PMI and uh, the whole team that was working with us in the last like a uh, few months. So this has been actually work that started uh, in June and here we are in September. So uh, a huge thank you for hosting us and trusting us with your time. Absolutely, big, big thank you for my side, and we're going to hand over for just a, to, for conclusion to Prasan. Okay, so I hope you could hear me. Firstly, many thanks to Katarina Kleslova. I'm Yay! Right. Yes, <laughs> not not bad. <laughs> okay, and Anna Hakobian for giving us the tips and tricks to enrich our PM role in these extraordinary days. I hope everyone of you and as well as me can take some time to look back and reflect to find where these could fit, uh, these tips could fix into our yeah, portfolios. And now to the heroes of today's online event, a big thanks to Chris and Sylvia, whom you already see on the screen, who were extremely dedicated to organize everything around this event, running the trials and coordinating all the technical infrastructure. I really want to tell you once more, well done and great to have you as volunteers. Great job, Chris. Great job, Sylvia. Then, next slide, please. Yeah, next virtual events. As I told before, there are a lot of virtual events uh, which are also published on our PMI Switzerland chapter website. As you see, leadership power skill. This is a, a series of event three uh, events in a, one after the other, all online events. You can see them in the PMI Switzerland website. 
there is one another one on digital transformation one on product owner and there is one pm master class which is actually an in person event um, please note that this is a, a whole day event however also uh, restricted with the number of participants due to the special situation we are in but still um, check the website and if there is uh, seats available yeah you will get you also get the details there okay next slide please yes and that's where please scan the qr code and give us your open feedback uh, take a while, take sorry take a couple of minutes you can already uh, scan it with your mobile phones this is extremely important for us help us to improve our next events identifying any shortcomings important for us as the organizing team to hear your needs and concerns additionally it also gives opportunity for the speakers to get a feedback on the event and their content so please uh, go ahead uh, do it and on the right side you see the pdu claim code uh, just uh, make a copy of it a photo of it and you can apply uh, for your pdus um, straight away it's already the code is active huh? so with that i think we come to the end of our evening event and i wish you all a nice evening or rest of the day depending on wherever you are and see you soon in one of our next events thank you all and have a great evening Bye -bye. Perfect. Thank you, everybody. Have thank a great you. evening and I'll hopefully see you in the next session. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye-bye.